Welcome to the Rauda, welcome to the Steel Fest 2023. This time I have a band for interview, which is not even playing here. And now the question might be, why on earth I'm doing this? But before we get into that, I will let this guy introduce themselves and then you will be answered. So, sir, please take your name and whatever you are doing here at this festival. Yeah, uh, my name is Audun and I am uh, here playing with Carpathian and Not Frost, but also uh, we are founding members of Svacha. Mm. So, what about you, sir? I am uh, Gomlerik. I'm also here to perform with the uh, Carpathian Forest and Not Frost, and also the founder of Svartja. All right, let's talk about the name of the band, Svartja. I obviously <laughs> cannot pronounce it properly. Yeah, way, no, but... no one can. <laughs> yeah. Norwegian has like a yeah. very specific way so how do you uh, pronounce the name, but let's start with the meaning. Uh, the name is uh, taken from an uh, old uh, national romantic painting from uh, a painter called August Koppel, which we just uh, felt was uh, fitting to the music. It was like, uh, and we were like 15 years old when we started, so uh, we, had, we didn't have like this international plan with it. Uh, so we just uh, thought it was uh, suitable for us and uh, the music. Now you played here with Carpet and Forest, but obviously you have this your own band, so to speak, yeah. and um, you also played in Finland before, yeah. but not this time, but I, I've listened to a lot of your albums and be reading, and I know that you're uh, re representing some of the better modern Norwegian black metal. Thank you. Um, what makes you make this good music when so many other bands are like going in decline, a lot of older bands are like just failing to do that, but you, among others, are able to put out some quality work? Yeah, thanks. Uh, it's a hard question to, to answer. Just uh, feel like uh, we've always been like this uh, tight group of friends from we were like in the beginning of our teens, and that's uh, uh, I think that's has molded how we promote uh, pursue music. Uh, we have no like uh, our ambitions is not to like. Uh, grow and be like this huge band, this arena thing, it's, it, that has never been the point. And we always like rehearse in the music. We don't like send riffs and uh, do it like this digital model. So you're old school? Yeah, I think we're a bit old school in that, uh, in that sense. We know there's like the technology that uh, makes it easier, but uh, the chemistry at the rehearsal space is uh, important to create music, which we all five can like, uh, stand behind, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So just all five members uh, enjoy and want to play. Now, mentioning that you have uh, quite a few roles with these different bands and all that stuff, how hard or easy it is for you to just, you know, go from one mindset to another when you're switching be between the bands? Like, how it is working for you? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of uh, songs to remember to have in your head, uh, but uh, we don't play that often with the uh, and uh, so uh, when we play with Swatcha we meet together and we rehearse in the songs and play a gig. With Carpathian it's um, easier in a way because we play all the time. Yep. So with Swatcha we have to dust off all the songs and, uh, and rehearse them again and get actually together and play and it's, it's another kind of music, it's faster, it's more technical. So when you're used to playing like uh, punkish deep D beats with Carpathian, and then you're playing uh, Code Human with such an, which is a blast beat song, it's, uh, it's uh, quite uh, difficult sometimes, but um, it works out uh, quite fine. Which is your personal favorite? Which, if you can like to play certain kind of songs faster or more rock and rollish, punkish style, yeah. which one do you get the biggest kicks out of? Well, I'm I'm more. Uh, punkish drummer, uh, heavy metal punk, uh, so uh, that's what, uh, what I like to play. And you, you can listen to Svartjan as well, we started very fast and we have like evolved to into more like a heavy thrash metal uh, and that's kind of where our music taste has taken us. Because we started to play fast and uh, a lot of blast beats and try to play as fast as we could and now it's more making cool music so yeah what what made you start playing extreme metal in the first place 
Ah, good question. Uh, this guy, huh? <laughs> I mean, what would we do? do it? Well, yeah, I'm ask him the same. Yeah, but that's, uh, I, I played in uh, like a heavy metal band and, uh, and I met uh, this guy and he started a band called Svatjan and he needed a drummer and I hadn't play, played extreme metal before, so okay. just started then. Yeah. So, so let's turn the blame on you. <laughs> Why on earth would you choose this kind of a very toxic and dangerous and know. dark and evil kind of music when uh, you're not that bad of a person, I guess? <laughs> it's, uh, I stumbled like uh, first, uh, I think I took like a typical route, just uh, my older siblings were listening to punk and hardcore and more that scene. So I started there and just evolved into like uh, listening to more Slayer and uh, those types of extreme metal. And uh, I picked up a guitar and started to play and, uh, and the rest is history. <laughs> now, some people have really good explanations like why they choose to re-instrument like it's like some people like, uh -huh. I always felt like I was the vocalist or somebody like, yeah, I always started drums when I was five. What made you go with the string instrument? Um, it was available. But that was uh, taken yeah. drums. That's no, but uh, like at my house, <laughs> it was yeah, yeah. The, the it was either piano or uh, guitar, and I chose guitar. <laughs> and, like, should I got a little bit Ember and Demo Borg yeah. on keyboard? So, yeah. just, yeah. so just started with an acoustic guitar for years, yeah. and then uh, I bought myself an uh, electric guitar. And, uh, yeah, it would suck to play piano some yeah. Slayer songs. Yeah, it's difficult. His father was actually one of my music teachers really? in, uh, in high school. Yeah. That's kind so, of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> So he, uh, he was like, uh, yeah, what you yeah. call it in English? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, conducting. Conducting, yeah. Conducting. So he, he taught me conducting in the music school. Oh, okay, <laughs> cool. So uh, let's talk about a little bit of parents and metal, because I, I think we're all being there, like doing our teenager shit, and parents are sometimes like, why do you have to listen to such noise? Or why are you doing listening to these guys and doing the makeup? And why don't you act like a normal human fucking being and play some pop or rock music? How are your parents? The, I, your I, think I, can, I think I can speak for both uh, Abdin and myself. We have had uh, very supportive parents. And as he was mentioning, my father was a conductor and a musical teacher. Even though that was like a choir music, it uh, didn't matter for him. Uh, so he went to the shows early on and uh, have always been uh, extremely supportive. So uh, I've never gotten that uh, grow up or uh, cut your hair or yeah, anything exactly. like that. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, quite to the contrary, actually. Yeah, North, Norway has been, it seems to us outsiders anyway, that Norway has been always very, very supportive, uh, even with the arsons and all that crazy shit that happened in the early 90s. But it seems like nowadays uh, black metal and all kind of metal is very much accepted with Norway's yeah, is, yeah. awards and all that stuff. Mm. Uh, how do you think it has changed throughout these decades? Uh, oh, uh, I think um, I think people have some more acceptance that it is no matter how you see it Norway's biggest cultural export. You can't like talk her out, uh, talk her way out of that. And I think uh, Inferno Festival has done uh, good with like the national media, like promoting it uh, the, the best sides of the scene. Um, Maybe that has had something to do with like the general opinion has uh, has changed a bit. Do you think also that, that because there are lots of different black metal festivals in, in Norway, not so much maybe other styles, that they have really paved the way for accepting and absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I think so. And uh, even though we, and the irony is, we almost never play in Norway. Yeah. Yeah. That's, Why so? Uh, no, just uh, there's not a lot of black metal festivals in Norway. There's like three, four, maybe. I think it's like when I ever see people talking about different festivals, like yeah, there's Inferno, there's Beer the Gates, there's Imperium, yeah. there's this and there's that, and well, some even the, the smaller cities are like, okay, there's happening so much, and uh, so um, do you ever feel like there is like maybe too much happening? Should it be downsized or should it go bigger? Uh, at least not downsize. Also, in my opinion, there's not a lot of, uh, especially like black metal festivals. But uh, yeah, don't know. Now, I, I hate political topics as such, but I always have to ask about it. And one thing what I've noticed that Norway, the national romanticism, like you mentioned, getting the inspi inspiration from the uh, name and all, 
uh, it seems like in Norway it's more accepted that you can just wave a Norwegian flag or wear a, a shirt having a Norwegian flag uh, or whatever and people are like yeah 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 it's part of our culture and heritage and stuff but I know that if uh, say Swedish band would go with the three kroner flag or Finnish band would go like I don't know dressed up in a Finnish flag they would be like nope you, you really can't do it um do you know why why it's more accepted in Norway and it's seen as like a bad thing. I have no idea actually, but Norwegians in general outside of black metal has this uh, love for their country and it's allowed to love your country. Yeah. And like in Sweden, yeah, it it's... Be. I mean, uh, yeah. all, all the countries of course should be. But I thought maybe um, between Sweden and Norway, maybe the second world has something to do with it. You know, the yeah, pride yeah, yeah. We, we won, yeah, and the Swedes were uh, not involved. Yeah. So maybe from that time, then it's more appropriate to celebrate your country. I don't know. But uh, in Black Metal as well, it's, it's not always like that, you know, because you have bands that take it a step too far. And uh, then, it's, uh, then it's not about uh, Norway anymore, but about yeah, politics. It's, yeah, it's uh, about kind of like staining that love for your culture yeah. and heritage. It's, and it's and worth stuff. mentioning, like, we have a much stronger constitutional day yeah. than uh, both uh, Finland and Sweden, like with the 17th of May. Yeah, that's, yeah, no, this, uh, yeah, days ago. yeah that's like uh, very uh, unique for Norway. Uh, yeah. I think mm. talking about flags, then, yeah. uh, then you yeah. see a lot of uh, Norwegian flags. I think that maybe in the Sweden constitution is, uh, as well, they they even then aren't la allowed to go around and wave flags. It's, it's kind of weird. It's, it's weird. It's weird. But Norway is also known for a lot of band being super inspired by the nature. You have mountains, you have fjords, you have, of course, seaside and forests and all that stuff. And that is a big difference because a lot of bands. Uh, maybe in Finland as well, are more into societies and political uh, issues. While a lot of Norwegian bands are into nature and fucking u the universe, you know? Yeah. And not so much about uh, human stuff. Yeah. yeah. And that might, might be why it's more accepted uh, when Norwegian black metal bands use national symbols as well, because it's, it's not a statement. It's just uh, who we are. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Now let's talk about the topics of Svartier. So, like, if you got some up, like summarize what Svartier lyrically is all about. How would you describe it? Uh, I'm not uh, the writer of the lyrics, but uh, misanthropy and uh, existentialism and uh, nature. What part in nature is specifically interesting? I, I think uh, Hans Fisch, the, the vocalist, should uh, answer these questions. But uh, I think when he talks about nature and a lot of what the lyrics is about is human nature as well as like the nature nature. Uh, so I think that's a big part of the um, lyrical themes of uh, Swatcha. Now, what could you change if you would like have the absolute power? Like, okay, suddenly Swartiern is blessed with some kind of a universal power, and you know, like have this glove of metal. Like, we could you could just change the world, change something important, but you could choose only one thing. <laughs> That's a difficult question. Uh, I know I suck in that way. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We had the global Thanos. So, yep, yeah, exactly. Um, I have no idea. So, to change something, yeah? uh, make uh, the weekend longer. Yeah, but th th this is my whole. This is the whole point. Like with the doctrines, we're so fucking happy. Yeah, yeah. We, we have it so good. It's, uh, it's yeah. It's hard, hard, hard yeah. to change it. I think, but uh, you know, uh, the topic about Christianity as well. It's. Um, the problem, uh, we, we think about it on Shame is Just a Word, the last album is it's all about shame, you know. Yeah. What is shameful? What's in your head? Everyone has dark thoughts, everyone has sexual deviancies in their head. And that's what Christianity suppresses, you know. Because yeah. everyone is, has to follow this doctrine, as I said. So, um, so it's kind of like about frustrations. Yeah, it's not so much about 
always about you know that Christianity is the enemy. It's more like the whole doctrine uh, yeah. around, not yeah. the, not the Christianity and Jesus and God in, uh, in yeah, itself. Yeah, they are no. also just words for a lot. Yeah, of yeah. It's, uh, we don't believe in God, so how can we hate someone we don't believe in? You yeah, know? It would so like, it's, a, uh, yeah. like being angry at Santa Claus. Yeah, oh, yeah, God, yeah. I mean, why did you bring me that you car? So that so if we we. Have no interest in doing anti-Islam songs because we don't live in a Muslim society. We live in a yeah, Christian this, society. Yeah, this so. seems to be so hard concept to understand for some people. Like, like people are like, why don't you hit this and that uh, religion because they're also as bad or maybe worse? Like, I don't, I don't know, but I live in a Christian country, so it's kind of like a hard to be angry at something that is like thousands of kilometers yeah, away. Yeah, it like, doesn't involve us. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, uh, and we are not out to save the world from uh, religion. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, we don't have a mission. <laughs> it's just so you're uh, like men without a mission. Men without a mission. Yeah. We just uh, play black metal and try to, um, yeah, to take our art out. And um, if people like it and follow it, perfect. Then we can get a movement going. But uh, <laughs> now, talking about playing music, like coming from hard and including a lot of passion and all. Which comes first, playing live or making new songs? Playing live. Yeah. Why? For me, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I hate playing in the studio. It's uh, Why? pressure, it's uh, the fucking metronome, it's... Uh, expensive. Uh, yeah, expensive. <laughs> you have a fucking uh, short amount of time doing uh, stuff, yeah. By playing live, you're free. Yeah. yeah. yeah and with your voice uh, on stage and having a beer and the audience, perfect, yeah. What about you? Uh, exactly the same. I, I enjoy like the, the face of the writing music in my home studio. Yep. That I enjoy because it's on my own terms. But uh, the, as soon as you're talking about deadlines and uh, budgets and uh, stuff like that, not so much. So it's like the enemy of creativity. It, it can be. It's uh, sometimes it's good like to have a deadline. You have to like fucking step up and do the work. But not always. So uh, it depends. But uh, I also enjoy live much more than I enjoy studio. For sure. Now, if I question a little bit that misanthrope feeling you mentioned, and then you also like to play live, assuming that you also like a little bit pleasing the audience. Yeah. Do you feel there's a little bit of a contradiction? Or is no, it... I don't, because uh, my uh, I think most of the people in our audiences have the exact same feel that they enjoy the festival but get like socially exhausted from people and go home so what do you see in here since a lot of people get drunk and get hugged we hate, fucking hate people oh let's hug it out but sometimes it's kind of a, feels weird even though it's totally natural and all yeah, yeah, yeah. any favorite memories from uh, places you've toured or or done gigs and all that stuff like top concerts? Yeah, like, like places that really make you like, this is why we do music, this is why we tour, this is why we play live. Uh, I have like this uh, top uh, three, five uh, perhaps uh, list, but uh, for me personally, it was uh, we played Inferno in 2009 or 10, 2010, I think. And we just released uh, our debut album, uh, Misanthropic Path of Madness. And that was like this huge recognition uh, that show uh, at John Deere, but that was like really big for me back then. It was like a bucket list, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inferno, Inferno bucket list. It's like, and it's our like hometown, so it's uh, it's even more like pressure. But uh, so uh, I remember that one, and I remember uh, we played the uh, Meriden Death Fest in uh, Baltimore in 2016. That was also also like this uh, big show. Uh, it was like uh, a big deal uh, to get invited over the uh, over to the states. Do you have Do you have any like uh, specific places, like countries or cities or certain festivals? Like this is still on the bucket list. I, I want to do it. Do you have like something like that? This dream should be come true. Uh, no, no. Japan maybe. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I doubt Swartjan will ever yeah. perform in the... Uh, Maybe Carpathian or something. Maybe Carpathian. Ne- never know, I don't know. I you just read a few, few weeks ago that Behrig is suddenly... Doing I saw it, I like saw it. Like a comeback yeah. in Japan, yeah. everybody's like, what the hell is yeah. happening? 30 you know? years like, since like, the last time. Like, that's kind of a weird and unexpected. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. We have, we have played like all around Europe and we have been to the States and South America and North America, but uh, we haven't done Asia yet. So, um, maybe, so Dutch uh, definitely should be on the bucket list. It should, yeah. 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 That's a personal bucket list. Though. Personal, Not so yeah. much Not so much yeah. so. exactly. But it's, uh, it's an, uh, ironic that uh, we've been to South America and North America. That was Swatchan shows, not Carpathian Forest yet, at least. Yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe uh, Asia. Maybe. We'll see. What, can we, let, let's play a little bit of fortune tellers before I let you go. Uh, what will happen with your train, Spark journey? Let's say, let's fight for three years. It's uh, difficult to answer because uh, we don't have a plan uh, yet, at least. Uh, we're doing uh, at least one show this summer. And uh, and me and uh, Eric has talked about um, doing some shit later on. But uh, we are more in the band and we haven't really gotten us together and talked about the plan for the future. But um, hopefully it will be a lot more coming from Satya. Yeah. All right. Now, if you get to pick something to recommend to the audience who is not, okay, I'm excited about this band and all that stuff, but I, I don't know where to start. And you cannot name the like, latest albums. A lot of artists like, yeah, you should start with their latest album. Which album they should start with, excluding that? Listening to you for the first time. For time? Yeah. Uh, excluding the last album? Latest album, yeah. yeah then I would uh, I would start with uh, Misanthropic Path of Madness. Even though it's very different from uh, what we play now, it's, uh, it's a very important uh, album in uh, our history because it paved the way for like uh, tours and, uh, and it's a really good album. Any regrets in your history with the band? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, several of course, but... Uh, uh, perhaps our third album uh, was under a bit, uh, the premises was uh, a bit off and I regret not like uh, taking a stand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but it is what it is, talking about deadlines and stuff like that, so, uh, but uh, yeah, besides that, Without mentioning hundreds of uh, drunk stories <laughs> and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the deal. Yeah. Part of the deal. Okay, now it comes the silliest question of, of the whole thing. I forgot to ask you one question, and you wanted to answer it all the time. What it is? Mm-hmm. What, is what? The, what is the question I forgot to ask you? Am I going to uh, yeah. guess what you're going to ask me? No, no, you, you wanted to tell me something that I didn't know what to answer. You had like something, something specifically in your mind, like this I want to tell about me or playing the band. Mm-hmm, okay. Um, people uh, call me uh, the Lars Ulrich of uh, Black Metal. <laughs> Why? Yeah. I've been called that one, once. <laughs> but it's a good story. And I didn't know if it was an insult or a praise. So I, yeah, I just, it depends uh, what yeah, yeah. kind of a Metallica fan you are. I took it as a praise. I would, <laughs> I would, I would go with that as well. But I think he meant it as an insult. But, uh, yeah. All right, good. Now, one last word of wisdom. As an artist, to a fellow, maybe, I don't know, a new guy playing in a band, like, I'm going to set it up, I have guitar, what, what do I need to know? Like, a, your mentor <laughs> moment. <laughs> uh, oh, it's hard, just keep at it. Keep at it. Yeah. We'll finish with these lines, and, uh, you know, you should really check out their music. Go to see live if you have the possibility, and if you don't, it's your fault, your loss. I mean, there can be only one large Ulrich of black metal, so there you have it. This is Vardian, this is Stiglius 2023, this is Rauta. See you, and stay metal. Thank you, guys. <laughs> okay, uh, let's take a photo for uh, social media before you go. Yeah. I will be using that one when we are... When we are like, uh, can it pop like we...